Okay, here's a category I can't believe I didn't tackle sooner. Reusable bags. I love the concept of reusable bags. They make so much sense. The thing is, I only have two arms, so I usually only need two of them at any given time. If I'm really being ambitious and pushing the limits of what I can carry, I might need four bags, but that's it. I can't ever carry more than four bags at a time. And a good bag lasts a really long time. This here is my favorite reusable bag. It's a little nylon bag that packs up into itself. Would you believe that I have been using this bag for 24 years? The promotional logo wore off long ago. I don't even remember what it said. But the bag itself is good as new. I love it so much that I got another one just like it. And this one is only about 20 years old. Somewhere along the way, I got a similar bag, which seems to do okay. So that means that I only really need one more reusable shopping bag. But these things have a way of appearing. Somehow, despite decluttering some already in the course of donations and stuff, I still found... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 10, 11 more bags. As hard as it is to get rid of perfectly good reusable bags, I'm getting rid of these. And as with everything else, the goal is to do better in the future and just say no when someone offers me a free reusable bag unless this indestructible bag finally gives up the ghost. And remember, food isn't the only thing that goes bad. Anything with adhesive also tends to go bad. I had these big Avery labels stashed away for years, and when I finally went to use them up this morning, they just made a big mess. They were a little warped from storage, and a lot of the sheets jammed in the machine. Others somehow lost stickers, causing smears. And many other labels were just totally unusable. So if you have ancient Avery labels in storage, get rid of them. If you ever need them for real, you're going to want to use fresh ones anyway, or else you risk making a huge mess in your machine and just having a bunch of crappy labels. And finally, in the closet where I was storing all of the reusable bags, I also found three hats that I'm getting rid of. I put these under the category of ill-fitting hats. These are different from the horrible hats, such as the UK hat that I would never really want to wear anywhere anyway. Um, ill-fitting hats are just, they seemed like nice hats at the time, and there's nothing wrong wrong or super inherently embarrassing about them but they just don't fit so even if they might be sort of your style if they don't fit right which makes you never want to wear them then just get rid of them there's no point in keeping any clothes items that that you're not gonna wear um, in the case of these hats i just keep them because i think um but what if I lose all my hats and then what's going to happen to my shiny pate out in the cruel sunlight? I'm going to get sunburned and skin cancer without some kind of a hat on my shiny head. I don't think skin cancer appears instantly like that. And if I did happen to lose all of my hats, I would probably just go out and find one that fit and that I would really wear. I'm not wearing these other hats. Like this brown hat. Doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with this hat, but it's brown. I don't wear brown. I never wear this hat because it's brown. Or this hat that I actually really like in a lot of ways. It's a super cute logo from my friend Jason's old band, Godhead. I love the logo and in a lot of ways I love the hat, but this hat is so itchy. I can't wear an itchy hat, especially if I have a bunch of hats that don't itch. I just love this hat because I love Jason and I love the cute logo. But there's no other reason to keep the hat. And this hat just doesn't fit my head right. I keep thinking, oh, I'll tighten it up and fix it and make it fit. Um, no, I won't. 
I'm not that guy. It's time to let it go. Okay, you've already seen me tackle some of my outgoing postcard clutter. Now it's time to look at my incoming postcard clutter. I'm actually pretty good about getting rid of most of the incoming postcards. I scan them and I upload the images to Post Crossing itself, which stores all of the picture sides of the cards in my gallery. The message sides I've been storing on an external hard drive because I have some fantasy that someday in the future I might want to just sit around with a digital picture frame and reminisce about the thousands of postcards that I've received. Upon further reflection, this fantasy doesn't actually sound that fun, so maybe I will quit doing that. I only save the very, very best of the postcards and I save them in this box. But there's a subset of postcards that I really like, and those are the spooky postcards. The ones where people tell me about their ghost stories, or UFO stories, or Mothman, or weird dreams, or whatever. So I keep those favorites in this other box. And then I found this third box that appears to be just more overflow for yet more all-time favorites. This here is a reminder that the container method only works if you honor the container. I need to scale this back and get rid of two of these boxes and keep my real favorites down to just one box. And if there are some amazing postcards coming in, then I've got to get rid of something in the box to make room for the new ones. Them's the rules.